Hello and welcome to Chemical Distractions. So today we're going to be extracting citric acid from lemon juice. We're going to use these little lemons here and um, I'm not going to be using entirely lemons. I'm just going to buy some lemon juice. Now don't be upset. I didn't want to buy lemons and have to squeeze a bunch of lemons. I'm just, it's this real juice. It's real lemon juice. It says right on the bottle, real lemon, real lemon juice. They wouldn't lie. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to take some sodium hydroxide and we're going to throw it into the lemon juice. And let me explain why. So this is citric acid. It's got three of these carboxylic acid groups and each of these little groups has hydrogens on them that are really prone to popping off. These hydrogens that really wanna come off make it an acid. That's where the term citric acid comes from. So what happens is when we add the sodium hydroxide, the sodium hydroxide sort of comes in and it takes that hydrogen that really wants to come off and replaces it with a sodium ion. This produces water and the sodium ion sort of sticks to the citric acid there. But how do we know that the citric acid is going to trade a hydrogen for a sodium? Well, basically one of the fundamental rules of acids is that they want to go from strong acids to weak acids. And if you give them an opportunity, they'll take it. So here, citric acid has a pH of about three. And if we give it an opportunity to give up its hydrogen to water, it becomes a pH of seven. In this case, pH, the higher the pH, the weaker the acid. So it's actually becoming weaker. And because we know acids like to become weaker, we know that this reaction is going to happen. Eventually, all of the hydrogens are going to be replaced with sodium and we're going to have trisodium citrate. So why did we do this? Why do we want to make trisodium citrate? Well, now it's a salt. Before it was an acid and now it's a salt. So now that it's a salt, we can add another salt and sort of spice things up a little bit. To do this, we're going to now add calcium chloride. Now, a little thing about dissolving, the sodium citrate is dissolved in the water. And the way that works is the sodium ions sort of pop off of the citrate ions and they just sort of like do their own thing. They're not really attached anymore. And that's what lets it dissolve. But occasionally the sodium ions and the citrate ions will sort of link back together and they form a solid, but then that solid just sort of goes back into the liquid because it's very soluble. It doesn't want to form. So when we add the calcium chloride, the calcium chloride does the same thing. It likes to fall apart into the solution. And then sometimes it tries to get back together, but it just, it really can't do it. So now that we have a soup of all these different ions, what's really changed? We added the calcium chloride ions. How does that help? Normally we would just have a soup of ions, but if we have an opportunity for the ions to escape the solution, they're going to take it. And the opportunity for them to escape happens when the calcium ions attach to the citrate molecule. When they attach, they sort of ionically bond and they stay that way. This is because calcium is very sticky in a sense. It likes to hold onto the molecule and it doesn't want to come off. And that causes it to form a solid. And this time the solid just sort of stays a solid and it comes out as a solid in solution, we call that precipitation. And to all those keyboard warriors out there, yes, I know, uh, technically, because calcium has a plus two charge, you need multiple citrate ions in order to balance the... I know, I know, I'm aware. <laughs> this is an oversimplification, just trust me, it works. So what you end up with is this solid tricalcium citrate in this disgusting solution here. So then we, run it through a filter, and that just gives us the solid tricalcium citrate. And when we get it out, it's a little bit wet. Now, we can't have it wet because we need to weigh it to do some calculations. So what I do is I set my hot plate to 80 degrees. I just sort of plop it on there and I let the water sort of come off over a few hours. There's lots of different ways to dry out stuff. This is by all means not the best way. It's actually, you know, you don't want to get it too hot. This could be a little dangerous because then it'll just sort of like burn the citrate and then it you ruined your product but the temperature is controlled here so it's not a big deal so now that we have it all dried out we can weigh it and we can use this weight to figure out exactly how much sulfuric acid we need we do a little calculations stoichiometry maths and then uh, boom it spits out 20 milliliters we need 20 milliliters except we don't need 20 milliliters <laughs> 20 milliliters was wrong but it's really 
impossible to figure out what the exact amount is because lemons are just full of things. And this is very impure stuff. If it was pure, this would work. It's not pure, it doesn't work. But I dealt with this later. Don't worry about it. Just sort of forget that I ever said anything about that. Anyway, so we take the sulfuric acid and we diluted it to like 10% sulfuric acid and water. And we slowly start to add in the calcium citrate. And we are very careful to keep the heat under control. We don't want this to get too hot. But what's happening here is very similar to the first step that we did. See, the sulfuric acid is a stronger acid than the citric acid that we're making. So it's going to take its hydrogen and it's going to give it to the citric acid. Then the calcium is going to go back onto the sulfate. And now that it has hydrogens, it is soluble. And the sulfate ion took the calcium. So now it's sort of stuck with it and it's not soluble now. So we did this reaction over a few hours and it's kind of hard to know how much has progressed. So we just sort of went with however much time we could spend on it. Then once we think the reaction's good and done, we can filter off the solid calcium sulfate and it'll get stuck in the filter and then all of the citric acid sort of pours down in the water because it's, it's all dissolved. So now what we have is just pure citric acid and water. So if we just sort of boil off the water, then we'll be left with <laughs> pure <laughs> citric acid. Uh, what is wrong with you? Why are you brown? So yes, the astute among you may realize that it's brown and citric acid is white, but lemons are full of like hundreds of chemicals. We were bound to get some stuff mixed in there. Ultimately, this is very impure, but is it citric acid? Well, we can test this by taking a little piece, dissolving it in water and testing the pH. I tested this little piece in water and the pH came to pretty much dead on three, which is what should be expected from citric acid. It should be about three. So yeah, this is probably citric acid and like a bunch of other proteins and just gibberish. But ultimately I give myself an A for effort and a B for outcome. This turned out not very good, but it was a fun experiment and it explains a lot of fundamental chemistry concepts. So thank you for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. I read every comment and join the Discord. Join the Discord. And one last thing, check these guys out. Yeah, look, it's uh, Eric Rambat. That guy, that guy is awesome. But seriously, thank you guys for donating to the lab. If anybody would like to make donations, they go directly to this lab. Follow the GoFundMe link.